everyone. It's great to see you here. I, I really, I do want to start off by saying I appreciate the fact that you had multiple choices of what to watch today and you decided to turn to tune in here uh, with us in Mountain. Because um, you want to learn more about connected television, which is great because it's one of my favorite topics to speak to. Uh, my name is Dan Tarek. I'm the director of CTV and OTT strategy at Mountain. Now, you're going to want to immediately call me Derek. When I say Dan Tarek, you can just call me Dan. Uh, uh, moving forward, that's, that's my actual name. Um, I am here today, down in the bottom, uh, in, in the chat room, hopefully, unless something really went awry. Uh, I'm present, so if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat. I'm happy to answer to the best of my ability. Uh, um, also, don't make fun of me in the chat. I'm a generally sensitive person, and, and I am going to see it. Uh, but uh, what we'd like to speak to today, overall, is connected television for the retailer. Um, I kind of want to start off with some, some ideas around myths, right? Uh, uh, some preconceived notions that I think that are out there around CTV and OTT. Uh, so we'll get through that, a little bit of you know, why it should matter to you as well. And then the title of the presentation, right? Let's get into the benchmarks, how we wanna measure uh, what would make sense for you and your organization, what you can look forward to. So uh, again, any questions, please feel free to insert them in the chat. Um, I wanna start off with what exactly is connected TV, CTV and OTT? Because there's a lot of different terminology out there for it, right? You've, you've heard addressable TV, you've heard direct response TV, CTV and OTT, a couple dozen others, uh, as far as, as what's available uh, to you as a retailer. Um, from a high level, I'm just gonna kind of break it down with the distinguishment between uh, OTT and CTV. Uh, OTT means over the top, which unless you're talking about a Jim Carrey comedic performance, or a 1980s Stallone movie about arm wrestling uh, still doesn't make much sense, but it, it really refers to content specifically, content that you can get to outside of a closed system. So you don't need a cable or a cable provider. You don't need a satellite. You come in over the top to access that content. So this is us in an app as opposed to uh, through, the, through the network itself, through your cable provider. Um, CTV are the devices to be able to access that content, or at least a type of device to access that content. So the Roku's that you got your parents three years ago for Christmas that they still haven't set up yet, that is a CTV device. Um, and Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TVs, et cetera. That's what we use to access that. Okay. So, the majority of today's conversation is really going to be around, you know, CTV uh, uh, accessing that, that OTT content. Um, why does this matter to you? And, and this is where I want to get into addressing some, I, what I think are some preconceived notions among retailers out there. Um, you know, we have in the slide efficient, accessible, and useful. Really what that means is one, it doesn't have to be a big budget awareness play around a tentpole event. We don't have to focus on Q4. We don't have to focus on, uh, you know, every kiss beginning with, with, with K. Uh, it can really be a more uh, evergreen approach because we're going to lend efficiency to it, because we're going to lend um, a certain level now of, of ability to fluctuate and adjust budget based on time of year, uh, based on what's going, with your, going on with your own seasonality. Um, making sure that, and, and it doesn't need to be this big, huge budget anymore. It can be more of an evergreen concept as far as that's concerned. And that's part of what makes it accessible as well, right? Um, we don't have to have uh, a tremendous creative teams with a ton of experience behind this or a large agency backing us. It's accessible through platforms right now, it, like just like Facebook, like LinkedIn, you know, those types of business managers, you can now manage connected television as well. And useful because it gets results. Uh, because 
it really is to an extent where your user is your user, your buyer, your customer, that person is right now. Um, they're watching connected television. Uh, and we'll get into a, a little bit of the demographic breakout, but, but really what I'm speaking to overall, when we start talking about a shift in the system, one that may be a little bit more relevant uh, to you as a retailer is, is kind of juxtaposing the concept of an awareness-based campaign against a performance-based campaign. And an awareness-based campaign is a little bit more old school. I mean, it's still, widely regarded as, as a, a, a methodology of how to execute connect television, but it's going to be more what your media buying agency is considering when they talk about CTV or OTT. And that's um, getting an understanding of the, the target audience that you want to address and then putting a plan together that you know, puts 100K against Hulu and 25K against Roku and you know 200K against NBC uh, over a flighted campaign for a certain amount of time. Um, uh, and you're doing it in these areas because that's where your customer should be. Uh, that's how we're going to create some level of influence on them. Um, and the deliverables, the measurables in that instance, our impressions and the amount of users we reach, the percentage of the demographic or target audience that you want to speak to. It, what's variable in that is the, uh, uh, the cost per acquisition, right? Conversions. We turn on ad spend. Those are variable. We don't know what we're going to get out of that just yet. Uh, we just know we're, we're, we're priming um, the pump for, to use a term that we used to use 10 years ago uh, with, a, with an awareness-based campaign. Now, performance-based campaign takes that concept and it flips it on its head. With a performance-based campaign, what we're concerned with first and foremost is what is our cost per acquisition? What is our cost per visit? What is our return on ad spend? What is that metric that you as a retailer are already using, you know, in order to measure success, in order to explain success internally, in order to get an understanding of, of where you want um, uh, your time and your budget spent, right? Um, we're taking those metrics and we're gearing it towards that. What's variable is where we're going to appear. Right. It, 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 if your user um, is predictably on Hulu, you'll have a bunch of Hulu. Uh, but if they're unpredictably watching Travel Channel on their uh, um, Apple TV, then great. We'll still be able to reach them in that manner uh, as long as it's efficient. Right? And, and that's kind of the difference between an awareness-based campaign and a performance-based campaign that's going to move that impression around based on where we're getting visits, and where we're getting conversions. Should work a lot more like a Facebook. It should work a lot more like uh, the social channels and, and, and search channels that you're engaging today. Um, I wanna, is it relevant to you as far as your, your customer is concerned? And, and this is an, another item that I think, um, you know, two years ago was a more relevant conversation. But at this point, when you look at what's happened over the past year, you know, viewership on connected television is doubled overall. The inventory is doubled uh, for that for that reason. Um, there's 125 million roughly households in the United States. Uh, 30 some odd million baby boomers are now on connected television. Your audience is there, um, and that's ever growing as well. You can see some of the quotes that are on the slide uh, uh, from peers of our. our, our myself and our organization, just speaking to um, the increase, not only in the ad dollars that are spent there, but really, really how much viewership is there. Uh, the, the concept of a cord cutter and cord nevers and how that's ever growing, um, et cetera. So it's no longer, I've got a product uh, that, that really, you know, works for Gen Z or, 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 or millennials and I want to uh, get in front of them, maybe I should consider connect television. It's really turned into a medium where your customer is probably engaged pretty heavily there on a regular basis. Uh, and that's going to make it relevant to you because it's relevant to them. So, um, really, this just kind of recaps a lot of the things uh, I've said, the reason it should matter to you, right? We're targeting exactly who you want to.
Now, when I say exactly who you want to, that can mean a lot of different things. You, I'm sure at this point as a retailer, you know who your customer is. You know who normally walks through those doors uh, uh, with, within your brick and mortar store or, or comes to visit you online. Um, you can absolutely target those people specifically, but you can also target people that are in market for your specific product set. So they don't have to fall inside that demographic anymore. Now we're getting a little bit more reach around the actual buyer themselves, right? So if you sell shoes or if you sell furniture or if you sell you know, whatever it is that, that's, that's in your stores at this point in time and somebody's interested in purchasing that, you know, they're, they're comp they're comp your competitors are in their consideration set already. Um, uh, there's already you know, evidence that they're looking to buy, we can reach them. And we can reach them in a place um, that's a little bit more organic uh, and, and, and uh, uh, more of a trusted source, right? Right in their homes, right in their living room right now. And think about that for a second. Think about the difference between a television commercial and watching the user come back after viewing that television commercial versus an ad anywhere else on the internet. Right? With, with, a, with a television commercial, there is an intent. Somebody just saw your brand story for 30 seconds, 15 seconds, whatever that may be, and decided that I would like to learn more about this brand, about this product, about this message as a whole. Um, so they intentionally went and, and put your, your brand name into a browser and then visited the site. That's a lot different than ending up there because they conducted a search and maybe you don't have the content that they wanted exactly, or uh, they saw an ad on Facebook, they get a glimpse of what you do and then they got to your site and they, they, didn't, really, they didn't really see it. And with connected television, what we should be seeing is that um, your bounce rate is lower than it is from your other paid media channels. It should be lower than your site average. Your se session duration should be higher those are some of the reasons it should matter to you because it matters to your customers and it engages them and helps bringing them right back. Uh, lastly, we can measure that, right? which is, which is, again, we're getting to KPIs and benchmarks. Um, so let's talk about measurement. You know, what, what, what should, what should measurement look like at this point? Well, <clears throat> as opposed to impression, as opposed to users reached, something along those lines, we're going to recommend uh, we use a little bit harder performance-based metrics in order to measure connected television. Now, I, I can hear it from you, or at least feel it coming off you, but Dan, I've done a little bit of research and you know, Jeff Green from Trade Desk is talking about hearts and minds. Why are we using performance metrics? And we'll get into the exact reason why this is a better idea, not just because it's gonna create more revenue, um, but it, it's gonna allow us to optimize a little bit better. Uh, but those three metrics, those three key metrics we can look at are one, cost per visit. How much did I spend to get somebody back to my site? Right. Commonplace, easy. Uh, two, return on ad spend or cost per acquisition, whichever one you use to measure how much you spent in order to get a sale, a conversion on that end. And then lastly, assisted conversions, channel lift, because you know, it, we're going to hold ourselves accountable to a last touch metric. Uh, but really, it, 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 it is a first touch channel. So you should see other channels uh, increase in value as well. Those do better as well. So cost per visit. When should I use this? Right? When is the best time? Well, if you're an organization that's maybe your startup, and I know it says that on the slide, but, but really you're just trying to grow a specific audience. It doesn't even have to be your total site audience. Here's an audience that we haven't really gotten uh, a lot of traction with yet. We wanna try this channel to see if it creates some engagement there. Then great, let's use a cost per visit. Let's see how much it takes to drive a user back and look at that against maybe either a, a, a core uh, a campaign or how much it would cost to get your normal shopper in, or you are just starting off as a whole and you really do just need some general traction from the people that should be buying from you already. Great, same concept. Let's use a cost per visit. Let's worry about that high quality site traffic. And again, 
high quality is two of the key terms here. Bounce rates are down, session duration is up, um, and how much uh, am I paying for each of those visits? Um, once we're a little bit more established and you've got somewhat of a marketing mix going and you are attracting your, your, your client base that you, that you know you want to attract, or, or let's face it, it's Q4 and for client base or not, it's Q4 and, and, and you need conversions. This is it, sale time. Uh, let's use a return on ad spend or cost per acquisition in the same way you would with search, in the same way you would with social. Uh, if we want to measure success appropriately, let's track to that, to that endpoint. We can, and again, you, you should be able to find platforms. Um, I know you can. We, we, we have one uh, that, uh, that, can, that can do a, a, cost, per, uh, a cost per acquisition, uh, return on ad spend, um, effort towards that goal, and be able to track it on a, on a last touch attribution system, um, even though it is a first touch channel. Hence, assisted conversion, the channel lift. Most common, when you've got a good, solid media mix going, right? You're, you're running multiple different channels. You've got a few of them pretty well optimized already. Um, you know what you're getting to them, uh, on their, getting from them uh, on their own right now. And you want to be able to provide some lifts. So between you and I, you're also probably going to have to convince some people in your organization that this is a route to go. Um, even if they've heard of connected television or OTT, they haven't necessarily thought about it as a performance channel. Right? Uh, so that, you know, th that campaign that you pitched six months ago uh, in order to get some more budget for search or some more budget for social, that's going to look better as well with connected television it's a first touch channel again. So when a user sees that commercial, they're going to come back to your site in a litany of different methods, right? Now, for the most part, they're going to enter their enter your brand name in the browser, come back through direct traffic, maybe come back through organic. Um, but your branded paid search, that should go up. You should be getting more revenue for dollars spent on your branded paid search. It should be much more impactful. Your display, that should be more impactful at this point. Social is going to be affected. You're going to see um, significant lifts in the revenue each channel is able to provide based on the traffic that we are able to drive through connected television, that you're able to drive through connected television. So, um, why these KPIs, right? And, and we've discussed a little bit already why do we want to use performance metrics as opposed to awareness metrics? Aren't awareness metrics going to give us more accurate portrayal? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Um, I would say this, when you look at the landscape as a whole, it's still today pretty disparate as far as where you could potentially find your customer, right? Uh, um, Hulu isn't necessarily connected to Roku, which isn't necessarily connected to NBC. So you want to be able to allocate uh, uh, a budget. You want to be able to allocate impression uh, based on what's going to be most effective. And when you talk about most effective, you really can't say where I can serve the most impression. It's where I'm going to reach my user and drive the most conversion, drive the most, the most visits from. Um, that's why you should be using these types of, of KPIs, right? Your inventory is spread out. Uh, you want an audience first approach, and you want this person to come back to your site and visit you. Um, and the best way to, to allocate those impressions are based on, on, on those individual metrics themselves. The last piece of that, you know, there, I guess the secondary piece of that is, you know, organizationally, your teams already understand this. Your performance teams already get, you know, uh, um, cost per acquisition. Uh, your CEO already already knows what he's seeing uh, in, in Google Analytics. Um, that's going to help you not only measure campaign efficacy and get the right impression at the right place at the right time. It's also going to help you tell that story internally and externally uh, uh, on 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 how effective this effort was, why this was such a good 
idea to test in the first place. So. Um, and, and we spoke to elevating growth in other channels. Uh, so our average, and it's a smaller sample size um, that we've looked at when I come when I, when I give you these numbers, but our average increase for paid search revenue on a daily basis before and after uh, and in a comparison of before and after CTV launches is around 200%. That's a big lift in, a, in, in these other channels. And that's gonna help you prove efficacy, not only for connected television, but for everything that you're doing right now. When we compare retargeting, right? From display only um, against connected television retargeting. Same concept, still a first party audience that came to my site with the next amount of time, I'm defining it the same way as I would with display. We're going to see an increase in return on ad spend between 15 and 38%, right? That's, that's kind of the range that we normally see. Your conversions are gonna go up as a whole. Um, your visit rate is gonna go up along with all those peripheral metrics that we spoke to before, so. So how can your ad platform help? Um, good question. You're convinced, you're sold. You wanna explore this more at this point in time. And you think this is gonna be a great idea. What are some of the key things that you need to look for as far as your ad platform is concerned, right? Well, one, um, does it do audience first targeting? Most likely, yes, to be honest with you. Most likely your agencies and your ad platforms and everyone else is gonna be doing some level of audience first targeting. They're gonna get their, their, their uh, uh, in-market audiences or demographic-based audiences, uh, third party or otherwise, and be able to address them effectively. Um, the second aspect of it is, does it provide the right mix of networks? And what do I mean by that? You have to have some level of, of uh, uh, um, uh, some level of elasticity behind who you're able to reach and on what networks you're able to reach because your users are moving all over the place, right? Your users can be on Hulu, uh, and then they can be on Discover, um, and they can do that both of them in the same day. So you need to make sure you've got coverage uh, and a good amount of networks, right? Now, that doesn't mean you have to be on uh, um, something that isn't in a cable package. Uh, I don't necessarily know that you're gonna get the same efficacy from those channels anyway. Those are good for reach, uh, not necessarily great for performance, um, but enough to be confident in the fact that you're gonna be able to uh, get to your customers in the way that you need to, right place, right time. Um, you wanna make sure there's automated media buying behind that platform in order to make sure that you are reaching customers in the right place at the right time. There are several organizations that do automated media buying um, uh, uh, and, and you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a shift necessarily from your media buying organization. They're gonna be a little bit more manual probably, but if you can make that automated, have that impression move around in real time, all the better. Um, and the last aspect of it, impression served to the right viewers based on, it's just really a summary. So, uh, I want to share with you a customer success story, um, and this is why this is where we get back into the relevance to a retailer right now. Right? Pros Closet, Pros Closet sells bicycles, and they used to do linear television. And think about the linear television buy. One, you have to have a decent amount to invest up front. Right. And two, your demographic for somebody interested in a bicycle is either somebody who's in market for a bike right now or a bicycle enthusiast. Right. That can be a lot of different people. It's kind of really hard to, to nail down um, exactly what that demographic looks like. So when they're buying on linear, you know, they could buy an episode of This Is Us. Great. Everybody watches This Is Us. Um, but uh, 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 you're only going to get X amount of enthusiasts uh, watching This Is Us at that point in time. So really, they were kind of stuck with, you know, Tour de France, bicycle, bicycle events. That's, that's where their money was spent. Tenfold events 
with flighted campaigns based around them on television, and that's where they saw their success. Great. They moved from that to connected television. So now we can target exactly bicycle enthusiasts, no matter where they are, uh, whenever they're watching a show on connected television. Don't have to wait for the Tour de France to know that we're addressing them. Um, we've got that audience ready to go. So it's an evergreen campaign now and an evergreen style behind it. And we're able to consistently reach that audience with a lot of success behind it. And I think the most important metric that we're showing on this slide is the one on the bottom, 5% increase to top line revenue. And that is on a year over year basis, the increase in, in, in bicycle sales revenue or revenue from bicycle sales um, with just that one change, right? Return on ad spend, I would invite you uh, uh, to get projections yourself on what a ROAS and a, and a, and a, co a cost per visit should look like for your organization, but um, a, very solid for them. Um, so what are our takeaways right now? What are the top three? Okay, well, uh, one, let's focus on performance, right? It, it's, it is, what CTV can do uh, extremely well. In addition to your social channels, in addition to your search channel, uh, think of it as a performance channel um, that works with uh, what you have established in that arena with your performance team, uh, more so than your branding team, right? Um, two, pick a, a, a solution that's uh, built for exactly that, built for performance, that can do automated media buying around a cost per acquisition or a return on ad spend. And the last part of it is measure, measure for success uh, on, a, on a consistent basis. So um, pick your metric, one that's appropriate to you, work with your platform to decide what should be uh, the metric at that, um, at that point in time. Um, and then go ahead and, and test, execute, start small, scale as it goes. You'll see how elastic this channel really can be. Um, it, it's uh, 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 going to give you great results. And, and it's going to um, uh, really be relevant and impactful, not just to you, but to your entire organization. Um, folks, that's, that's about all for me. And again, my name is Dan. Um, you can reach me if you have any additional questions that you didn't get to put in the chat box today at danatmountain.com, uh, M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N. Um, so uh, I'm, I've been there a while, so I get my, my first name. I'm that guy. I'm very proud of that. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And I hope to hear from you soon. Um, last request, uh, there is a red button. If you could press that and provide some feedback for the NRF Retail Converge, they'd love to hear from you as well. So uh, I hope to hear from you in the near future. Um, have a great rest of the day. And uh, yeah, hopefully we speak soon.